Hey folks, today I'm going to show you a few different methods for seeding data into a database using a .NET API. Seeding data is a great way to pre-populate your database with information that you know is fairly static, or data that you know at the time of development. It is also a great way to insert test data into your database so that you can run tests against consistent data. There are several different ways to seed data, and the first couple that I'll show you are variations of ways of creating any framework migrations. And the first example I'll show you is by overriding the onModelCreating method in the DB context. So here I have a very simple API, and I currently have it set up with one entity called Vehicle. It's a very simple entity that has ID, make, and model. I already have one initial migration set up, and all this does is create that vehicles table for me. In our DB context, what we want to do is override the onModelCreating method. And with that method overridden, what we're going to do now is we're going to tell the model builder to pre-populate our table with some data. And we do that using the hasData method. This hasData method essentially just takes a list of vehicles, and whatever data you put it in that list is going to be converted into a migration. Okay, I've got my first few examples in here for my seed data. Now what I need to do is I need to go create a new migration. And if you're not familiar with migrations, I've done a couple videos on it. I'll put my most recent one here. I'll go ahead and open up a terminal. I'm using the one that's integrated in JetBrains Writer. And the command I'll use is .NET EF Migrations Add, and I'm going to call it Seed Data. And I created a new migration over here. So if we go take a look at it, you can see it's using the Migrations Builder to insert data into the vehicle's table. And all it does is give a list of values with my three examples in it. And then the down method, it just deletes those three records. And you can use this method anywhere where you have access to this model builder. So in this example, I'm using it directly in the DB context in the on model creating method. But if you have a larger API, you might be splitting these entity configurations into their own configuration files. And you can do the same thing doing that. So I'll just really quick create one of those and show you how that works. Okay, I've created a new configuration file for the vehicle called vehicle configuration. And I've got this set up according to the docs. I'll put a link to the docs down below. And you can see here, now we have access to the entity type builder. So this is basically the migration builder, but for only a specific entity. And with this builder, you can essentially do the same thing that you did before. So instead of model builder, now we just have entity builder. So if I say builder has data, you can see it takes the same parameters as the has data from before. It's the exact same method. So you can put all of your configuration in this one file for this one entity. And then when you create the migrations, it'll be the exact same as the way we did it just a second ago. Now I'll show you another method of how to create seed data. And this method is by creating an empty migration and then you populate all the information in it that you would like. Doing it this way allows you to add all the data you want to in the migration and you don't have to have all of that in your code. So what I'll do is I'll go back into my terminal. I'll create a new empty migration. The command is the exact same as before. I'm gonna call it um, seed data round two. And when you create a migration and you don't have any code changes, it just creates an empty migration for you. Now I have a new file called seed data round two and the up and down method in this are empty. Now what you could do is you could come in here and you could add one, two, 10, a thousand records in here manually. For example, I'll go back to the initial seed data and you could copy this, you could go into your new file and you could change all these, you could add as many as you want and you could do it that way. This method is okay because you're not tightly coupling your actual code to your data, but you're still writing .NET code in order to create data in your database. And one other option is you could create a SQL file in your project that has all of your insert statements, all of your data changes inside of that, and then you read that file in this migration and execute the code that is inside of it. And I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna make this migration so it's clean. I'm gonna go into my project. I'm gonna add a folder called SQL. And inside of that, I'm gonna create a SQL file. And in this SQL file, you can put in all of your SQL to prep your database. So I'll copy in from my cheat sheet over here. And this file here is just taking raw SQL and we're gonna execute this. And so I'm inserting a few different records in this. And the way this works is you go into your migration file and from here you can actually execute raw SQL in this migration builder. So if you do migration.sql, it takes in a string and it will execute all of that SQL. And so for now, I'll just make that empty to make it happy. And what we want to do is we want to read in the file that we just created into a string and then we'll pass that into this method. And that's pretty easy. All we got to do is read in that file. So I'll say file.readAllText. And actually, I'm just going to move this folder up one just so it's easier to read. So you say SQL slash seed data, set that equal to a new var called SQL. So that's just a string, and then we'll pass that in. You might wanna do a little checking just to make sure that it actually reads this in and that it doesn't fail, but for this example, this will work. 
In this example, I'm only going to do the up method. I'm not going to do the down for the migration. If you wanted to, you could have two separate SQL files, one for up and one for down. That way you're just making sure that you're clearing out data if you're worried about that. But this is another great alternative to writing all of your migrations in your C-sharp code. Those are the examples of how you would see data using migrations. And using migrations is great because you can add that into your build pipeline, it'll automatically see the data for you, and then you're off and ready to go. But let's say, for example, that you don't want to do all the seeding during the deployment of your application. And you want to be able to do this seeding on demand. For example, let's say that your application is deployed, you run a few tests that change the data, but then you want to reset your data and start all over again. Doing it this way, you'd have to redeploy and rerun these migrations. Another method that would work great in that situation is by just having an endpoint that you call that populates and seeds your data for you. So in here, I have a test data controller with an endpoint called seed, and you could put everything that you want in this method to seed your data. And I'll just really quickly kind of go through how this might work. The first thing I have in my example is to make sure that if this is a production environment, don't run this because more than likely, you don't want to do this against a production database. And I'm doing that by using the iWebhost environment. And this is a great way for checking if it's dev, test, or prod. And then from here, you can use your database context to add and remove data as you wish. So if I scroll up just a little bit, you can see I'm injecting my database context into this controller. And in this example, all I'm doing is saying, do we already have a vehicle called Chevy Silverado? And if we do not, go ahead and create one and then save the changes. And you could use this to populate one record, 10 records, a million records. Another advantage of doing it this way is that if you have relationships between your entities, you can add the entities and the relationships all at once and then commit everything to the database. And you can also do that in the first couple of examples I showed you where you're creating the actual C sharp code in the database context. It is a little bit harder in the SQL, so that's you know a couple of pros and cons of the different ways of doing it. One thing you might want to add to this endpoint or to this controller as a whole is if you are doing it this way, Obviously, make sure it's authenticated. You might want to add a one or two more layers of authorization. For example, you might want to pass in a key, and that could be some really long key that you make up that you have to pass in this call in order for this to actually execute. That would just be one more layer of security to make sure that this doesn't accidentally get called. So that's just a few examples of how you can see data using .NET. Of course, there's other alternatives, and I'm sure other people are using other ways of doing this. So if you like or dislike any of these options, let me know down below in the comments. If you're doing your seed data another way, I'd love to hear about that. So put a comment down below on how you do it. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.